last but definitely not least, he's defending Publix Atlanta half marathon champion and the board record holder. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Give it up for Nicholas Kosembe. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we are one minute, one minute from the start of today's race. We have our leads running. We have our wave airs running. We're fired up. We're getting ready. We're excited. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're excited to be here, let me hear you. Make some noise. All right, remember. The race command will be given to you by Brenda Reed, right here from Public. Now she will be given the command runner set. Once you hear that horn, that's when you'll go. Once you hear the horn, that's when you'll go. Looks like we're about 20 seconds away. All right, let's get ready, let's get ready, let's get ready. Shake it out. Inhale confidence, exhale down. Go, 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 go. Welcome to Atlanta. Hammers and bones back to the back of the clothes. Turn it up, turn it up, DJ, turn it up, DJ. I got to hear it. We got to start this race off right. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. I see you way there. 140. Wow. That's a fast pace. We got some fast runners out there. You all are looking good. You're doing wonderful way there. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Hold on, allergic to Dr. Pratt. Hold on, Calvin, stop. Hold on, Calvin, stop. Hold on, hold on. Calvin, hold on, stop. Calvin, stop. Hold on, Calvin, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. stop, stop. You're going right after Wave A. You're going after Wave A. Great googly boogly. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. We're excited. We're all excited. We got to give you guys some space. We know that the push assists are fast. Three wheels are always fast. All right. The race is underway, Carrie. This field is, I mean, and this is the best part about a race. It's just you got, you, as soon as it goes off, you, you have the bold guy who goes up in there. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what he's doing up there, but he, he, I don't think he's got any business being up there. He's going to pay the price later. Well, I mean, everyone is excited. You and I raced the 5K yesterday, and we got off the line, and we took off as well. But, you know, it feels good to hear that gun go off and to actually just get into your rhythm. They're going to actually climb a little bit in this start, and then they go downhill to about two and a half miles. So, you know, so there, there is something about getting, getting off the line, getting into your race position, letting the the breath kind of come back, get your second wind a little bit, and just feel the energy. It's there's so much energy, Chris. So up in the front of the pack, we've got a mostly East African presence there with the Kenyans. Uh, this is just a, such a strong field that I think like for a good portion of the early parts of the race, they're going to be pretty bunched up. And last year, we really didn't see a big move up until about 10 miles in, into the race. So uh, patience is key. Patience is key. I mean, this race is a tough race. You know, we know here in Atlanta, there's really no flat involved, but they do have some good downhill stretches. So there are you know, different race tactics that will be played in here. And you do have to work those downhills. You got to get into that rhythm. You got to be able to push. And we're seeing a big pack of women right here. And I think that's what we heard yesterday when we were talking to them, that teamwork, right? We heard Hella say that. They were going to work together, but they are all in this to win. They want to win this, this half marathon. This is a big thing for them to have on their race resume. Right in front of them, you've got a couple guys with, you know, running with Atlanta Track Club. Uh, from your sort of race experience, uh, the men leading the way for for the women is this is this a little bit of a benefit, or do you have like little added pacemakers in this one? Yeah, I mean, it's always nice to have pacemakers up front. You know, we have a number of of athletes that train with men yep. they're used to having that they're you know obviously the women are looking at each other because those are the competitors that they need to beat yep. there's prize money money there's you know accolades to be won here but it is nice to have those guys that are there to set that pace to let them know that they are on pace i mean you know the men up front don't have that but they they're they're in it to win it too and they have each other to look at one of the 
the things that just stood out to me is a lot of turns on this. Lots race. of turns. So it's not just the, the hills that are at a factor that maybe, you know, uh, slow people down, but the turns and being able to navigate the tangents and, and just what's the best approach to them. It, well, we could possibly see a move being made at some point in the race on a turn. Yeah, I mean, I love a turn when I'm in the lead because then when I look back and can't see anybody, I get excited. But then I also love when you are in the lead and you want to try to hide and get a little bit ahead of people, you can really use those turns to, to kind of stretch out those leads and to really make big moves. So yeah, it's it's a really fun course. And if you have not run it, I think you need to come here and run it. I know, I'm still feeling a little bit of pain. I'm still feeling the uh, effects of the 5K uh, yesterday <laughs> in my legs. But one of the most powerful stories here at the Atlanta Publix Atlanta Half Marathon is that this is the largest event of the year for the Kyle Peace Foundation, which creates opportunities for people with disabilities to take part in endurance events. All right, I am here with Brent and Kyle Pease from the Kyle Pease Foundation. 50 teams strong, making this their biggest event of the year. Guys, looking at this, 50 teams, you've built something pretty incredible. How's it feel? Uh, it's fantastic. I mean, we, you know, when we first came here, it was just the two of us, and to see that so many people are part of this now, and you know, we've got a vibe going on over the tent since 4:45 this morning, and just really proud of of what we've built here and with the support of the track club. It's a it's a special experience for us. Yeah, couldn't help but notice that tent was popping this morning. The energy is amazing. Kyle, how does it feel? If we were over there with you, how's it feel in that tent? How's everyone feeling? Uh, it's, it's amazing. This is a, one of my favorite favorite events of the year. It's in the hometown city with the beautiful fat drop in, and we're going to show the crazy community what a cool kid is all about. I love that. All right, you two are not running together today. We know that you often compete together. What are the goals for today? What can we expect from the two of you? Uh, have fun. I mean, this is really our opportunity for the Atlanta running community to just show us who we are. And there's people that we haven't met yet, and somebody's going to run past us, or we're going to run past somebody. And we just, like Kyle said, we want to show them what inclusion looks like. And we're really proud that the track club supports that. And so let's show everybody in Atlanta what Running City is and where the Kyle Pease Foundation fits into that. Let's talk about that support for people who are seeing that tent over there and will see you out on the streets and thinking, I want to get involved. I want to be a part of this. What's the best way for them to do that? Uh, the best way is to go to our website, www.kylepeacefoundation.org, and that way they can connect with us and ask us questions, and we'll, we'll, we'll get started with them. What is the best way to help? Is it pushing? Is it donations? What do you need? What do you want? Uh, time, talent, treasures. I mean, it's everything. I mean, we need your time. Come out and help. Be a part of this with somebody like Kyle. Give them your legs and share them this experience of being an athlete. I mean, that's the most special part of this. But, you know, we need talent. Kyle and I are clearly not smart enough to do this on our own. And, yeah, donations, the, the donations go a long way to support our organization. The Kyle Peace Foundation, we cover all the expenses for our athletes, and so every dollar counts. All right, so if I'm looking and I'm thinking, I'd like to push an athlete. What would I need to know? And maybe I'm feeling a little intimidated. Help me out. Uh, that's a great question. I mean, you know, I used to always tell people my fastest times were running with Kyle, and I've been told that's the flawed way to share it. But what I would say is that, you know, when you get behind this chair, there, it's a special experience, you know, because you feel the energy of the athlete, you see who they are, and, and, and we found out how tough an athlete Kyle is, and you just get to experience that. So know that it is hard. It's physically hard to push a human being up these hills of Atlanta, but when you go downhill, that's the feeling that you experience here at the finish line of just being pulled with with that athlete and being part of it. All right, you two, have fun out there. Good luck, thank you for all that you do. Kyle Pease Foundation, making a difference in the world. Thanks guys. Thank you. Chris, Carrie, back to you. They truly are making a difference. And it's just, we got here this morning, we were one of the first people here, but there was already a big crowd and presence for the Kyle Pease Foundation. Here's an opportunity and a chance to learn a little bit more in this great video that uh, we produced about them. 
I was actually volunteering with the Atlanta Track Club when I saw the Kyle Peace Foundation um, run by, and I was like, oh wow, I want to do that. And so I decided to reach out, and I got involved from there. It's very impactful what we're doing, and you know, it really comes out to the work that the foundation is doing. It's incredible, and uh, I'm so happy to be a part of it. It's pretty fun. We uh, cheer each other on as we race through the race. And we're like, go, go, go. Yeah, we, we, we joke around a good bit. And so yeah, it makes it a lot competitive, but, but fun. These athletes love anybody and everybody, um, pushing them along. So um, yeah, if you want to get involved, I just encourage you to hop on and um, come out one day. Come be a part of this community. Come be a part of this party feel, this family feel that the Kyle Peace Foundation has, because it's still growing and we need you to help us keep growing it. All right, so now we move back to the race action. For the very first mile, we saw the men split 427 and the women go through in 455. I know it's time to race. The women are well in those early miles. They were under race course record pace. Like, yeah. all right, we we figured that out. It was 512 per mile to be on Dorcas Tuatuk's record. She ran 108.22. So that is the big time of the day to keep your eye on. I think for the men's side, they're also thinking sub 60. Like they're, they're so yes. close to doing it on this course that uh, for, for that, I think there'll be 435, 434-ish is gonna be what they're looking to split per mile. Some of these guys have done it before and uh, you know they're working together right up in the front right now. Last year's race was a, went out a little slower than this because I actually spoke with Rory Lynn letter uh, the Canadian uh, marathoner and I asked him sort of a little bit he he saw that I was announcing the race and he messaged me he was like dude one of the toughest courses yes. I've ever run and so you know he was he, I asked him how does a course like this compare to something like the Houston Half Marathon, where it's flat and traditionally very fast? Some of the guys in this race, their personal bests were set in Houston. He said that's maybe like a three and a half to four minute difference. Ooh. So that's that's it, that's a pretty big difference. And so last year they went out, I believe, in 435. I got the chance to look at his Strava splits, and uh, yeah, it, it gets more and more challenging as the race goes on. So they're on a mission right now, and they're pushing each other. They're out faster than last year. Yeah, two big groups right now, but you know, we talked about the hills, and even the downhills can get you as well. You know, the uphills are hard, and we know that. That kind of gets that cardiovascular system working, right? You start to really breathe, the legs get heavy. But going down, too, after you've run a number of miles on some downhill stretches, which we will have today, those quads start to burn. They talk about the Boston Marathon, right? That's coming up. A lot of these athletes are getting ready for that. They're building up that strength for the ups and the downs of the hills there. So, so many reasons to come here and run, not only to, to get this title, but because they are using this race to become better athletes and to be able to run against the best in the world, which we do have such good world-class athletes here today. Carrie, I guess for some of the people who may not be as familiar tuning into a like elite mar uh, race broadcast, uh, what is the per so put on your coaching and your athlete uh -huh. here for a second. What is the purpose of setting a half marathon, maybe a month or so out before a, a marathon performance? Uh, what, what do you want to get out of a race? Oh, there's so much, right? I mean, just a little bit of a rest in that training. You know, we've talked to a lot of the athletes. Some of them are running up to 130 miles a week. That's a lot of running. So it gives them a chance to back off, taper, like we all do for a big race like this, taper down in training, but also go through the rhythm of knowing how to put your race shoes on, to get your race uniform on, to make sure you don't chafe in those areas that a lot of people need to practice, right? But they also need to mentally practice what it's like to toe the line, get into an, a competition like this, and get ready for their next big event. Yeah, this one's a good prep for Boston because of the hills. We, uh, we've got some other elites uh, floating around Paris Marathon, which is about like 35 or so days. Uh, there was, uh, what other marathons are coming up this spring? Well, we have, you know, a big London. summer. We have London, we have a big summer with the World Championships again. And, you know, a lot of people are also looking for the Olympics already next year. So there's just a lot of things on that race calendar. It's been a busy couple of years since the pandemic. Lots of people were trying to fit fix in things that they couldn't do during the pandemic. So yeah, we have lots of races and I think just people are excited to be back.
So we're going to come up on a 5K split in about uh, a minute or so on the men's side. The course record pace, they would they came through uh, in 1429 through the 5K last year. And we'll be heading to the finish line shortly as our very own Ali Feller is trying to catch a moment with Vivian Chepgrui, your women's champion. And I, I see that Ali has got her. So we'll toss it over to Ali at the finish. Vivian, congratulations. You just ran nearly 13.1 miles by yourself. What was that like being out there soloing for a lot of that race? How did that feel? Did that make it harder? No, it was not. It was not hard. I had to push to myself. So that was by design. I love it.